manage. You're going to have to manage pretty quick. There's a little doggy coming. Where? Hi. I could have killed you. Well, with a bit of help from Fido here. Oh, Butler's got her in the kitchen now. Who is she? Oh, some little cart. Don't ask me who she is. You! Hello, Mr. Hammond. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I hired you to keep tabs on a villa, not trample over the flower beds and duff up the home help, and a bloody fine minder you turned out to be an all. That's not fair, Mr. Hammond. Oh, I... shut up. Why ain't you telling that little crook? I was, but then I got invited in by Lurch here and Fido. What are you telling me? He's here? You followed him here? Go and check upstairs, quick. Well, he's not here now, is he? He's about ten miles away now. What's going on, Daddy? I said check, go on, move. Daddy, what's happening? It's all right, darling. So what you're saying is that little rat was here and I could have nailed him back the rights. Why didn't you come and tell me? Well, I didn't know you was here. It's six o'clock in the bleeding morning. Where'd you expect to find me? Cavorting round a maypole? The address you gave us was some posh number in Eaton Square. So I've got a place in the smoke and a place in the sticks. I've also got 72 clubs around this country and nine hotels on the coast and a villa in Marbella. Now, what do you want me to do when someone comes and asks me for me address? Give them a list? You're a detective. You're supposed to suss out these things. Hammond wants us to catch someone in the act. Take us years. The young man in question isn't likely to try anything while we're watching. You mean you've been disclosed? Of course we have. I've told you there are three of us. Each yes, one... yes, quite. But now he was being watched. Didn't stop him from breaking and entering this morning, did it? Oh, that's true. And they do say, because I've heard them say, leopards have great difficulty in changing their spots. May I? Stephen Dermott, born 14th of August, 1960. Youth custody and three lots of Nick. Two sixes and an 18-monther. Not exactly Al Capone, is he? I'd say if our Charlie wants him banged up and the key thrown away, he's baying at the moon. You're almost certainly right, but... No buts. It's a nothing case. I'm going to drop it. I'd rather you didn't. It's not actually what I came to see you about, but, um, the opportunity seems too good to miss. You see, the Home Office has an interest. What, in Steve Dermot? No, in Charlie Hammond. Just poke around a bit. See what you can see. Oh, you'll love that. He's right up your street. He's got money, style, good looks, ooh, and class. Eighteen. Nineteen. Oh, you'll do yourself a mischief, you will. Don't bank on it, sweetheart. And don't borrow money against it, neither. Twenty. Check us a towel over, will you? You've got something in your throat, Butler. Go and suck something. Don't give me none of that polite crap, right? Yeah, right. Mr. Dyson to see you. We'll show him in. Where did you find him? Your agency in Rochester. My agency in Rochester. No wonder we're losing money and over fist. Mr. Hammond? I'll come in, Dyson. You needn't bring the Commonwealth in with you. Well, I'll go and get on then. Oh, Gloria. I don't know what that butler's up to, but if I catch him at it, he's on the next plane to Vienna, right? Right. I didn't know you got yourself a butler. I didn't. I got myself a minder. Ha, bloody ha. And while we're on that subject, who's minding the job shop in Rochester? Uh, Jerry Williams. Or Sackin, or something. Charlie! What now? Why Vienna? The boys' choir, sweetheart. He'll be singing in it. Oh. You marry a woman for her body, and all you get is aggravation from the staff. Then we had a good night. Very good. Shame about the figures, though. I did a head count down at Peacock's last night, and there was three more heads than you've got here. 
Didn't see you there. I didn't go there. Look, son, there's more than one use for a security video. You give me the high-tech stuff and I'll use it, no mistake. Who's bent? You or the cashier? <laughs> Neither of us. The three extra were my guests. Complimentaries. So you owe me six quid? <laughs> yeah. Well? Well, what? Where's me six quid? Very rich. That goes without saying. Hmm. Now there are several different companies all under the Hamanegis. The nightclubs are the biggest, then the hotels, computer dating agencies, employment agency, and a billing station. You could lose the math here in this little lot. So what's his angle? You tell me. The police say it's all very well run. Hmm. What does Nigel say? It's all about liberties. Hmm. Taking, abusing, or the department store? It wasn't more forthcoming. Oh, that'll do for starters. Crystal's nightclub. It should be more fun than trailing round after Steve Dermott. Yes, yeah, certainly. Sorry, won't keep you a moment. Mm. Hello, uh, 590063, Davis, FP. Oh, I see. Right, thank you. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Davis. I'm afraid your membership's been rescinded. Why? Well, as I'm sure you're aware, this is a singles-only club, and it appears you weren't altogether truthful on your application form. Truthful? What are you talking about? Your wife, sir. You see, we must protect right, our Lisa. members. Sure, we can sort this out? Mr. Davis, let me buy you a drink and we'll talk about it. Here's my problems do arise, right, sir. Yes, madam. I want a whole new ID, preferably one that's a little bit murky. Mm. It's a bit late in the day to set one up. Why murky? Set a thief to catch a thief. What sort of murky do you want? There's a nice immoral one here. Go on. How's your Australian? Australian? No, I'm not talking about Dow, I'm talking about your accent. Forget it. They got sloppy bowels. Ah. Comes of eating sloppy food. <laughs> All right, lady, there's a knife in your back. Now, you're going to listen to me real good. Now, I want... Ah! Ah! Oh! Oh, 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 look, don't do nothing. I was, I was only joking, really. Ah! This isn't a knife. This is a six-inch ruler. Yeah, well, like I said, I was only joking. What's in uh, the bag? The bag? Oh, sh oh sh shopping. What sort of shopping? Oh, well, you know, sh shopping, like uh, fish fingers, uh, sp a small uh, tin of baked yeah, beans. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Yeah. 
Like I said, shopping. Excuse me. Oh! 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 oh for God's sake, woman. This is very embarrassing. Ah! Oh! All right. You said I was going to listen. You going to talk? Well, I was kind of hoping you would. Oh, yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking. Go on, then. Well, I don't know what to say, really. So you felt like a bit of easy mugging, eh? No. What, are you some sort of sex freak? Do me a favour. And what's the big idea? Well, look, I just get a bit browned off being followed everywhere. I mean, that's reasonable, isn't it? And you want to know why? No, I know why. I don't think you do, but I do. I think I felt guilty about leaving you to that dog. I should have felt guilty for the bleeding dog. Pick up your shopping. Why? Because you're going to buy me a drink and tell me why I'm following you. Get a move on. British driver's license, one endorsement. Birth certificate, Australian. Oh, let me see. Uh, one work permit, expired. Mm, you were born in Adelaide. I was. Adelaide, South Australia. That's how Darrell would have said it. You forget about Darrell. Here are the keys to your flat. Try not to wreck. The place it belongs to an ex-cabinet minister, so you'll be trespassing. We had the keys made up. What if he comes home? He won't. He's got another six years to do in Long Bay Penitentiary. Now we're getting somewhere. Who is he and what's he done? His name's Bruce McKinley, and until a couple of years ago, he was the minister in charge of regional development in Australia. Yes? He took a bribe. That's all. Nothing unusual about that. How much was it worth to him? Two million pounds sterling. And what about the money? I expect his mistress, whoever she is, is um, spending it as fast as she can. What if she goes back to the flat? You'll just have to improvise, won't you? Oh, fine. Just one thing. What's that? You still haven't explained why the Home Office are so interested. It's difficult to say. We've had a number of complaints about, well, I suppose, police harassment would best describe it. Police harassment? Yes. Well, why are we still investigating Charlie Hammond? Because one of our eagle-eyed computer chaps discovered that all the complaints came from people who had been Charlie Hammond's customers at one time or another. All right, so I've done a bit of time. That's all over now. I've been straight for three years. Two and a half. All right, two and a half. Look, it isn't easy, you know. I still get the regular pull down. No, not wanted, that's me. Okay. It's my classification at CRO. I hear it every time they stuff me in the back of a panda. No not wanted story of my life. So what's Charlie Hammond got against you? Mm. There you go. Well, I work in the garage, right? And Charlie, well, no, it all started when this bird comes in for a tune-up. Like, real horny number. Leather mini skirt, black spiky hair. Anyway, she sort of starts chatting to me and then, like, putting her hand on me knee, right? And starts like... Listen, right? you don't write up to any men's magazine. It's the truth, straight up. Anyway, so I think to myself, Stevie boy, no more grab a gremlin for you, innit? <laughs> yeah, anyway, so uh, I ask her out, and uh, she says yeah, and um, I arrange to meet her down the pictures. Does this go on for long? Look, you ask me, so I'm telling you. No, no, go on, go on. Right, so there I am, waiting in this hissing rain, and all of a sudden this blonde comes up. A blonde? Yeah, I mean, real smart as well. I mean, talk about class. Anyway, she comes over, sort of, links her arm in mine and says, hi. I say, lady, you're making big mistake. And I look again and I realise it's the same bird. The same dark-haired, punk, horny. With a tuna. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what's that got to do with you breaking into Charlie Hammond's country home? Well, I've got to get a message to her somehow, haven't I? I mean, I can't exactly write or phone it, I think. Well, Charlie kill me, wouldn't he? Hang on, hang on. What are you telling me? He's telling you about me. I'm Charlie's daughter. Well, now, that 
it's all about you, Fiona. You don't mind if I call you Fiona, do you? Not at all. Good. I prefer not to be formal. We like to think of this as a friendly agency. So, what sort of man are we looking for? The one who'll marry me. Well, of course. That's the end product, as it were. That's what we women were put here for. Mrs. Hargreaves, just how confidential is the Hammond Dating Agency? Absolutely confidential, my dear. Not a word is ever breathed outside this office. All the details are fed into the computer and forgotten. Completely forgotten. Never to be seen again. But how? Technology, my dear. The computer finds the perfect match and we introduce you. It's as simple as that. Then you have all the joy and romance of discovering each other for yourselves, secure in the knowledge of your total mutual compatibility. Isn't it wonderful? I have a confession to make. And trust me, have faith. I need a husband because I need the nationality. I'm an illegal immigrant. Really? You don't look like one. I should have gone home to Adelaide when my work permit expired two years ago. But I have to stay here. There are reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. I am not having my little girl put up the spout by some ex con yobbo, right? Daddy, I love him. Oh, don't give me any of that old rubbish. I give you the best education money can buy. Elocution, deportment, finishing school. You should be off nobbing with, with officers and gentlemen. Not getting yourself lumbered with some scruffy little tea leaf. Oh, I think he's very sweet. Oh, you think anyone's very sweet if they've got a zip in their trousers? Oh, charming. Anyway, even when I went out with that ambassador's son, he didn't like that either. Didn't like it? Did... He was so black on the night he came here, I opened the door, I thought someone had hung their false teeth up in the porch. <laughs> Daddy, you're living in a different century. I like black people. Now listen, my girl. I had it very hard when I was your age. Mm, here we go. But I worked hard and made something of myself. Now, anything she wants, she gets. She wanted a pony, I'll get her a pony. A sports car, I'll get her one. A skiing holiday, there's Arad's van full of gear outside. Now, I didn't do none of that so she could finish up pushing a second-hand pram round a, round a council estate. It won't happen. She's on the pill. Gloria? Oh, don't take the notice of her. That's Miss X Bexley Carnival Queen. I suppose her legs and her brain she sits on. Here, do you mind? You married her. And don't give your mother no lip, neither. She's not my mother. Look, this is getting us nowhere. Steve Dermott knows he's being followed. That's right. Well, he knows he's being watched, he's not going to do nothing, is he? So what are you saying? You want a chaperone rather than a private detective? Yeah, if you want to put it that way. Then why aren't I following your daughter? Well, I can't be doing that. I don't mind. I think it's a marvellous idea. Are you any good at squash and stuff like that? Why, what have you got to do once your makeup's on? Eddie could do it, or Wayne. It's Wayne's day off, and Eddie's got a leg to break. If I thought you could break a leg, I'd send Eddie to Mason. Whose leg? Dougie Parker, manager Dan Croydon. He's a fool to himself. I told him last time. Dougie, I said, you can't beat this kind of technology, so don't try. Like the times are gone when it was two for the governor and one for yourself. Charlie knows, does he? He knows about Dougie, yeah, but he don't know nothing about Maidstone naturally. Oh, yeah. He did say to check Dougie's booper contributions are all paid off. We don't want him going on the National Health and skiving off till Christmas. He gets two months, then he's back to work, plasters or not. Otherwise, we'll break his other bleeding leg. You tell him. Right. There you go. It's a big one, so don't screw it up. It's a woman! Right. Should be a pushover. Fancy taking over your father's business, would you? You're joking. He won't let me near it. I've never even been to one of his clubs. Mind you, it works the other way, I suppose. He doesn't know much about me either. Well, like you being on the pill. Of course I am. I've been since I was 15. Well, why not tell him? It'll save him a lot of worry. Oh, Daddy's sweet, but he's dreadfully old-fashioned. I couldn't upset him like that. You're upsetting him by going out with Steve. I can't help that, though, can I? 
I'm in love. Oh, throw up. But surely your old men must realise that we can't chaperone you for the rest of your life. It's only for another couple of weeks. Then I'm off to college. Except I don't want to go. Well, what do you want to do? Go to drama school. Be an actress. Why don't you? Daddy won't hear of it. He thinks actresses are common. But be fair to him. He did say if I proved to him I was any good, he'd think about it. That sounds reasonable. I just want a chance to learn. Well, there's still two weeks. Plenty of time to whack in a performance. Dawson? Yeah? Who are you? Well, I'm an old friend of Bruce McKinley's. I thought we could have a little chat. So, the angle straight blackmail. Mm. She thought I was McKinley's mistress and started the bidding at £100,000. Or what would happen? Or I'd find myself back in the only country where I can't spend the money. I gave her some good Australian verbals. Daryl would have been proud of me. <laughs> What bugs me is how they got onto it so quickly. Oh, well, it's easy. It's all on here. Well, I'll show you. One membership card with a magnetic strip worth about 2K. What? Say about 2,000 separate bits of information. I'm not saying this carries that much, but it could. There you go. Fiona Dawson. Your address, your date of birth, and the date you joined the club. And what's that? Well, that is a particular access code. I say if you come to a club door and it's shut, mm. you put your card in the slot, push, and the door opens. And? Well, what happens is that the card reader by the door relays this information to Charlie Hammond's central computer. Mm. How long does that take? Microseconds. There's all this other stuff. Code words. Some of them I've cracked, and some of the easy ones I guessed. Now that's an easy code. That takes you into the computer dating file. And this is a still taken from a security video camera. Hmm. And this is the information you gave on your application form, programmed to cross-reference with other sources. What other sources? Other computers, trade-offs with finance houses, debt collection agencies, department stores, or oh, dozens of them. But in your case, it didn't get past your address before tossing out a query. Well? Well. The address you gave was 3 stroke 1 Lewington Court Maidstone. Well, the electoral register says that you don't live there. That's query 1. So the next point of reference is a street and trade directory which says Bruce McKinley lives there, not entitled to vote. Next question is, who is Bruce McKinley? And what does it answer? Well, that information is safeguarded. I can't access it without seeing the computer. What sort of safeguard? Well, I don't know, really. Um, some sort of password that would bring out a whole new memory bank. I don't know. I'd have to see it. Great. Charlie Hammond has just been on the phone for you. He's very angry. He wants you over there now. That is Katie's bed. Yes. It hasn't been slept in. No. But she hasn't been home all night. So where is she? Where the hell is my daughter? Been waiting long? About two and a half days. Where you been? Brighton. And where's Katie? Search me. I haven't seen her since Saturday. So what's in Brighton? Who's up with the boys? What, since Saturday? I was thirsty. And you've no idea where Katie is? At home? No. I want to talk to you. When? Now. Okay. Mm. 
I've got nothing against the old geezer. In fact, in a way, I quite admire him. It's him I'm interested in, actually. What, Charlie Hammond? Why? He's got this office in Chatham, and I would love an hour or so having a shifty round it. Do it. You work for him. Not anymore. We got sacked. You, uh, asking me to... No. Because I could, you know. I know you could. I've, uh, sort of got this knack of getting into places, haven't we? I've noticed. <laughs> um, what exactly are we, uh, looking for? I don't know, really. Not sure. Not until we get there. I'll pick you up at three. What, this afternoon? Oh, yeah, it's half day closing. Get him in. Oh, cheers. Now I'm stepping out on my own. No more things. Mr. Dyson, excuse us, but uh, Charlie Hammond's on his way out. Oh, bloody hell. You can't see me. What am I going to do? Lose yourself. Fast. I'll see you later. Mr. Hammond, anything wrong? Well, I've passed an afternoon off, so I suppose something must be. Just a few auditions, Mr. Hammond? Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Tracy. Yes? This is Mr. Hammond, right? Find him a table and get him anything he wants. Go on, jump to it. Mr. Hammond. Just another office. Can you get in there? Do I want to? Well, I can get the window open. Go on in.
Window's still open below. Oi. Could always take our clothes off. <laughs> yeah. Might certainly pass the time. Come in. Get him off. I'm never gonna believe this. What? The men's magazines when I send them this letter. Maggie, it's Prune. We've got a nibble. Give me a couple of hours and then get Nigel to bail me out. Right. Now what? Well, we're not going to skip with it, are we? Who's going down it? Me. I'm lighter. Would you mind stepping out the vehicle, please, miss? Great light, miss. It's faulty. It is now. Could I see your driver's license, please, miss? I'm going to have to ask you to come to the police station, miss. Are you arresting me? Yes. Why? Suspicion. Of what? Oh, we'll think of something. What's all this stuff? Coded data. Some other computer is asking this one questions. Questions? Personal questions. The sort it shouldn't be asking. And uh, that one's answering, right? Right. Well, what sort of personal questions? Well, that's what we've got to find out. Look for a three-figure number followed by the code return. There. Three, four, nine, return. Okay. Names and addresses, so what? Well, so it's in this computer's memory for some reason. Probably privileged information being passed to someone who shouldn't have it. You care to take a seat, madam? I'll be along in a moment. What's going on for long? Shut up. Eyes. Oh, hello. Yes. Yes, hang on. Hang on, I don't know that much about computers. Well, you don't have to. Listen, do what I say. There are certain code names and sequences. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I got that. Anything else? No, nope, that's it. We'll see you in about half an hour. We're on our way home. Good on your way any place, lady. Give Mr. Dyson on the blower. I don't know much about yours, Wayne boy. But you, my, you are tasty. 
You have over five grand's worth of radio gear in your car. Why? Why did you arrest me? All right. We arrested you on suspicion. And having arrested you, our inquiries show that you are an alien. Illegally in the country. There's no way you can know that. <laughs> My dear Miss Dawson, the Home Office has lists. Lists of immigrants. How long aliens are permitted to work in the country. And I'm on that list. You are indeed. You're lying, Inspector. Fiona Dawson isn't on any list. For the simple reason that Fiona Dawson doesn't exist. The information you have been fed... Oh, very imaginative, but I'm afraid... No buts, Inspector. You are swimming in very dangerous waters. Then who are you? Fred Smith and Steve Dermott. Are they in the computer? OK. So we can afford to lose them. Yeah, of course I'm in permanently. Uh, down the shaft. Let the river do it. Yeah. Hey, hang around to make sure, right? You. Look, I'm busy, kid. Come and talk to me in the car. I've got all your records, Grace. All this. Ah! Get in it. Run! Get off! Right, let's see what we get. like a miniature criminal records office. That's exactly what it's like. How do they get the information? It's public. Newspapers are public. Court proceedings are public. There's no law against collecting, collating, and recording information in a computer. In fact, there never has been any law against having information. Just what you do with it, yes? Hmm. <laughs> All right, everybody out. Come on, come on. Come on, watch her. Down the drain. Got some talking to do, Lenny. Hello, Charlie. I thought you was going to your mother's. Yeah, I am. I, I was on my way. I'm, I just stopped by to get, and I was. Um, I'll get. I'll get my coat. Yeah, and get some clothes as well, eh? Your mother's very particular about things like that. Oh, never mind about her. She'll keep. Don't you understand? They're going to kill Steve and Fred. Stephen, I don't know what you're talking about. Look, Daddy, listen to me. It's important. Katie. Yes. We got some talking to do, and all. Now what? We wait. What? A man said to make sure. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? We wait till the tide goes out and then we crawl down it. I think you're missing the point somehow. The next time the tide goes out, we'll be sluiced out with it, and by tomorrow we could be halfway to Belgium. hasn't come in yet, but when it does, it goes all the way up to there. 
Well, then we float up with it till we reach that ladder. Yeah, we could tread water for a couple of hours with our hands tied behind our backs and then make our way up the ladder with our teeth. Turn round and bend your knees. That'll help. Just do it. And what is now? This is what you call lateral thinking. And when I say jump, you jump. What, what jump? That's what I said. Okay? Right. Jump! Oh! Great. Thanks a bunch. Ah, oh, now what am I going to do? Well, now you just thread your legs through. When you've got your hands in front of you, you come to my leg. Legs through there. Stop! Stop! I've got cramp. I've got cramp! Don't stop, stop. Me. I've got cramp! Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Beaumont, but we have a direct link with the Criminal Records Office and any number of data banks up and down the country. The computer is a vital ingredient in modern policing. I think you're missing the point, Inspector. When people use a credit card or visit a club or join a dating agency, the information they give is for that purpose only. And not for forensic inquiry by any stray policeman who cares to muscle in on it. Police work has always been based on information. A word passed and paid for at a pub. A telephone call from an informant. A grass. And Dyson's computer is a super grass. No, it's a very useful tool. It tells us where people are, why, when and who they're with. The information is used for the public's good. Our record in this area is second to none. So is the record for unlawful arrests. Have you any idea why Dyson gives you access to his data? Yes. He's a very public-spirited man. Inspector, I think perhaps you'd better sit down. Hey, how much longer we got to sit here? Till they've disappeared, that's how long. Why should they disappear? Because Mr. Dyson said they would. Know what you're doing. See if they are. What? Disappear. No chance. Not yet. They've gone. Out of Dyson. It took all night, but it's a night you won't forget in a hurry. Steve, you're in your underpants. <laughs> oh, yeah. Merry Christmas. Would you credit it? Butler can actually do the business. Extortion, blackmail, conspiracy to murder, and Gloria Hammond is an accessory to most of them. A long time away for them both. What about the civil liberties thing, the police using the computer? Not a lot we can do about that. That would require new legislation, and that presupposes public pressure. Charlie Hammond will just have to change his codes. When you two have stopped knocking the police for doing their job, do you realise that we've got more information on our computer than Dyson ever dreamed of? That's altogether different. I mean, we're... Uh... Yes! We've got top security rating for start. We don't use it to harass innocent people. Not once we know they're innocent. Mm -hmm. But we're altogether more irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, where have you been? Down the drain. <laughs> You don't have to go back to that bed city, you know. Yes, I do. Oh, Daddy, I do appreciate all you've done for me. But I'm old enough to decide for myself now. 
So I am going to drama school, and I am going to see Steve. He hasn't even got a job. Oh, yeah. Only because I lost it down to you and your problems. Oh, come on, Steve. Don't let's argue. I'll be back tonight. Do you know anything about computers? No. Could you learn? By the Why, are you offering? I can't run the bloody thing myself, can I? Be at my office tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock sharp. Thanks. <laughs> Well, everything's back to normal, except I need a new wife. Any ideas? Well, there's this dating agency I know. 